Hi, this is Kathy with Craft with Kathy. Thanks for joining me today. Please feel free to comment below and let me know where you're viewing from. I thought this would make a nice little um, project on a flat canvas panel. This is a transfer called Heart Wreath. And as you can see, it's a wreath made out of flowers. And then there are some phrases to go with it, other, either love never fails or love is home. I'm not quite sure if I want to do love is home or if I just want to put the word love in the middle in script. I kind of like this. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to use the peel and paste method as I work on this um, so that I can do different colors and actually take my time and not be concerned with the paste drying as I go along. And to facilitate that, because this is kind of a little small areas, I'm, I cut um, some of my squeegees in smaller pieces so that I could get a little bit fine, finer um, areas when I apply the different colors. A little bit more of a tedious thing that I am not normally kind of my style, but I really like this transfer. I thought it was very sweet. And it would be very pretty, so that's what I'm going for. Feel free to drop a line below if you have any questions or comments on anything. Um, say hello where you're calling from. Hope everything is safe where you're at and that you're handling this time of chaos and crisis in our nation. Um, I find for me, doing a craft project is a, a way of escape and um, also I avoid the news a little bit. Um, of course, I check it out first thing in the morning and whatever, but um, have found that if I don't spend too much time, I want to be informed, but I don't want to keep seeing the same thing over and over because it really does suck the life out of you, unfortunately. So this is my way of hiding away for some peacefulness and um, gaining perspective and relaxing a bit. So, before I can begin, this is just a plain little canvas panel. I need to actually fuzz my transfer. This is our transfer. They are made out of um, silk screen, which is the white, and vinyl, which is the teal. This is a B-size transfer, which is around the size of 8.5 by 11. There were cut lines here, and I've already cut it apart into the different pieces. I usually label the back of the transfers with the title of the transfer in the individual piece so that I can tell what backing the transfer actually goes on. All of our transfers are adhesive backed and they go on this little backing and the side that the adhesive is applied to is shiny. The back of it is dull. So by putting the name on the back, I make it very easy for me to determine, first of all, what backing goes to what transfer but also I don't inadvertently apply the adhesive side to the dull side. Our transfers are reusable, generally eight to 12 times with proper care. Care is actually very, very easy. Now I'm gonna take this transfer and fuzz it. And by that, I mean I'm going to put it on what is our fuzzing towel. Before um, the company came out with fuzzing towels, we actually used towels or some people use their clothes or a sweatshirt or their jeans or whatever. The whole idea behind fuzzing is you want to deliberately apply fuzz or lint to the back side or the adhesive side of the transfer so that it does not stick as snugly as it would otherwise. Our transfers can be used obviously on canvas, on chalkboard, on wood, on glass, on metal, pretty much any non-porous surface. Um, and depending upon what your surface is, the adhesive will stick a little bit more strongly to um, metal or glass so then you really want to fuzz like crazy so this um, fuzzing cloth is like a terry cloth on one side and then a microfiber on the other the terry cloth side is the side that we use to apply the fuzz and i'm going to just roll this transfer off of the backing and apply it to my fuzzing cloth. Dull side, oops, shiny. So it's pretty obvious unless you're in a big, big hurry putting things back together, which is the shiny side. But any 
kind of precaution I found that you could take is uh, probably a good idea. So all I do is smooth it onto the fuzzing towel and then lift it off. And I could pull the whole transfer off, but I don't want to take any chance of the adhesive sticking to itself. I have had that happen and I found that basically running it under lukewarm water or letting it soak in lukewarm water a little for a little bit of time basically allows you to gently nudge the transfer apart. You never want to pull the transfer from the diagonal. You always want to lift from the top, bottom, left or right. Pulling it on the diagonal would be like pulling fabric on its bias and could actually distort it. So if your transfer becomes stuck to each other, you want to gently nudge it apart as opposed to pulling because they can't can stretch. It's just vinyl and silk screen. So I'm going to lift this transfer off of my fuzzing towel and apply it to my canvas. And this is just an 8 by 8 canvas. I thought this, would, this transfer would look nice. I'm going to use a couple different color greens. And I thought it would look really nice with a white background as opposed to a chalkboard and a black background. So hence the, the canvas panel. Truly, I think this would look pretty nice on just about anything. So I'm smoothing the transfer onto the canvas panel, making sure there aren't any air bubbles, and I could usually feel with my fingers, um, or I could look with my eyes, but I really don't see any. So I'm going to be using a lot of different colors of chalk paste, and this is chalk paste, not chalk paint. There's a difference. This is actually paste that has been made into um, a liquid form. It goes on wet and dries hard. And you want your paste, I've previously stirred this, to be the consistency of like a yogurt or um, a sour cream. So this happens to be our meadow green. And I have some pesto here, which actually very close to pesto, isn't it? And um, let's see what else I have here for green. I have a little bit of sage, which is a very pretty green. And then I'm going to use our coral for the flowers and our peachy keen. And maybe something else. It really depends how this goes. So I have to decide what leaves I want, what color. I think I'm going to go with. bright green here and then um, maybe the the pesto here this is going to be a little tight for me to get in there but we'll see how it goes so I'm dipping my little squeegee that I've cut up into my chalk paste Applying it to my chance transfer and just squeezing it over the white or the silk screen portion of the transfer. A little goes a long way with our chalk paste. I'm having just a little bit of difficulty getting the last bit of paste on that stem. Okay, I'm going to smooth it out, make sure there aren't any lines, and try and get full coverage of this up here. I'm going to do these little flower pods and I heat the sage. So then I'm going to go back and remove any excess and make sure there are no lines, which this is looking pretty good. I think I'm going to actually Oh, well, I guess I'll wait on that. Okay. I'm 
and I'm pretty much doing the same thing with the pesto. And I'm not quite sure if I could get in here and just do the stems. It's a little bit more tedious than I'm used to actually working with. And um, let's see if I could just get this stem a little bit just by using the corner of the squeegee. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I want to do these little pods in the sage. So, important to have a bunch of squeegees available or you could wash them in between. I just want to make sure that if I get a, the wrong color, if I bump into some chalk paste that is not sage here, that I make sure I do not put it in the container before washing it up because I don't want to contaminate my colors. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Oh goodness, should I do these flowers? Maybe I should. Um, while I'm working on this, let me get another squeegee and I think we need something kind of bright there. So I'm gonna do with the couture teal here. Oops, I grabbed a little bit too much chalk paste. Like I said, this is a little bit finer work than I usually do. Um, just because I don't have the steadiest of hands. But I think with a little patience, this will turn out nicely. I'm cleaning off the coral. Okay, now, I'm just lifting gently by the corner, not pulling now when I gain purchase at the bottom. I'm gonna lift this up. Oh, and that looks pretty nice, except here. I don't think I pressed hard enough with my pesto to get it through the silk screen fully. So I'm gonna come back here and do that again, pressing a little bit harder. Making sure I get good coverage. Oops. And I could actually blend these colors, blend my greens if I want. Because in nature, obviously, um, most things are not one solid color. Well, that's a little bit better, but I just need to hit it, I guess, again over here. Okay. I think that's much better. And this needs a little bit right here. I guess I need to press a little harder because of the fine lines here. And actually, I'm going to come up here and use a little bit of the meadow to get the rest of the stem in here, if I could fit in here. I think I've got chalk paste on my fingers and I'm gonna to need to clean up a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. This didn't really go through. So I'm going to lift and peel. Oops, I still can't get it right in that one leaf. Let's try it again. Okay, so it was a nice squeegee there. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry and then lay the transfer back down and finish the rest of it. I just don't want the transfer to dry Oops, dry in place because then when I go to lift it, I'll peel my chalk up. So this is called the paste and peel. You paste it and peel it, let it dry, and then lay it down gently again and continue with your other colors. I'm going to clean my fingers a little bit. Oops and come back in here and work on some of the other flowers.
nice idea to have some wet wipes available and definitely paper towels, especially when you're working on chalkboard. You know, I'm doing canvas, but chalkboard, it's always nice to um, have some water and paper towels around to clean up any issues whoops, you may run into. quite sure what I should make these flowers. I think they're echinacea, but I'm truly not sure. Um, maybe the couture coral, I'm thinking. Oops. Well, I think for, uh, what do I want to do here? Maybe I'll do the sage right here. Work on the sage and the leaves while I have this lifted up. I think the sage looks very pretty with this transfer. Actually put a little bit too much paste down here. Putting the excess back in the jar. And then maybe we'll do this flower in the coral. Oh, I think that looks very pretty. I'm going to come back in here and when I do the other stems, I'll change it up a bit. Taking care not to get my finger stuck to it too strongly. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's quite dry yet. Um, let's see what I could do here. There we go, just lift it up a little bit. Um, and I think I'm gonna do the other, oh, do I want the other flowers and coral? I'm doing a lot of coral. Maybe it's time for the peachy king. Let's see, I need another little squeegee, which, ah, here we go. Peachy King. Oops, and I just tripped on my transfer. Sometimes that happens. It's fine where it dripped, no big deal. Okay, I'm just wiping off the excess. And I'll get my little drip here too. And then in keeping with what I'm doing, I will make those little flower pods the sage. As soon as I find my sage squeegee. Did I lose it in here somewhere? Somewhere I misplaced it. Okay. You want to keep your squeegee in like a 35 degree, 40 degree angle here. Somehow when I video, I seem to hold it a little bit higher than normal. And 
let's see, what color did I do these leaves down here? I did the pesto. Hmm, okay. look that up and take a look at it make sure I got good coverage yeah my pesto is I'm just not doing well with it maybe I'm using too large of a squidgy here ah much better clean my fingers a bit and some more leaves here. Now what I've done sometimes is I've blended my colors. I'm going to put a little bit of sage right on top here just to give it a little bit of different color and I need a squeegee that I could use for both let's see I'll just take a larger one and kind of spread that over so I get a mix of greens in there and let's take a look oh pretty good let's get this a little bit darker. There, so it's a little bit different of green. I'm taking, going to take out my little lid here. Oops, before my whole transfer comes apart. Oops. <laughs> Not what you want to have happen. Okay, I have moved this, obviously. It lifted up. Let me lay it back down, line it up, and lay it down. Hmm. Okay, I smeared that. Let's see. clean this up. Some water on my paper towel. And this doesn't look like it's going too well, does it? Let's see if I can wash that whole area off. Generally, on other than chalkboard, um, the paste is permanent unless you clean it up very quickly and look at this worked out very very well okay oops fortunately I just smeared from my fingers this up. This. Let's see if I can get this cleaned up enough to salvage it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, my problem is my chalk paste is a little wet, and laying this over it, I could be smearing it. Oh, look at that. Nice gob of metal green paste on my fingernail. Okay. I'm going to try and lie this down without smearing what I've already done and lining it up. I should have made sure I pressed this down enough that it was on here a little bit strongly, more strongly than it was. So let's try this again. Yeah. 
looks almost in place here. I notice I have a great big dollop of sage chalk paste on this leaf. Did not intend to do that. Okay, I'm pressing down. Oops, this is misaligned a little bit, but I think we could fly with it. Um, pressing down where I have not chalked yet. This I'm not going to chalk over because I'll distort it. I do have the pink here, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay, so this is good. We can work with this. Press it down in the middle so it holds well. Okay. Redo the, the flower pods here. And you know what? I think I'm going to do sage and then come back with the pesto over it as opposed to the sage over the pesto. This way I could highlight it a little bit more without having to be so nervous about what I'm hitting or what coverage I'm getting. Okay, I'm smoothing it out. Get all my lines off. Put my excess paste back. And let's get, grab a little bit of pesto in here. Okay, let's see what the leaves look like there. Yeah, I think they look pretty good. So I'm going to lift that up. <laughs> I need to find a place to work here while I hold this up. I guess it's time to hit this area. If it was a larger transfer, I could just lay it over on itself and it would hold fairly well. But because this is smaller, it's being a little finicky for me. Oops. And I think I just got some coral on a leaf. Actually, not much, so I think I'm fine. So, let's do these other flowers that look like the echinacea and the peachy keen. Peachy keen squeegee walked away from me. Here we go. I think those will look nice. I'll let that drop again. Lift this up to dry. And clean my fingers a little bit. I 
I think this is a really pretty transfer. Reminds me of spring. Um, see, spring seems like obviously it's been a long time coming around here. And with um, COVID-19 and everything, um, just has kind of put a damper on things. But you need a breather. Take a look outside. Most likely your tulips are up a little bit. They should be breaking through the ground a couple inches high now. And soon we'll be blossoming and bringing some joy and happiness to you. If you have kids at home and are in the process of homeschooling now, I have a couple ideas that you might find to use as an adjunct to their education. I am starting a new little um, series called Ch Children's Chalk Time where I will show some projects and incorporate some um, slides or whatever of different online sources to enhance their education. And I always think um, if you can find something that is appealing to different levels of kids, you could basically um, show them something for all your children together as opposed to individually. Um, and I have some things up my sleeve about that. Actually, one I think is pretty cool, especially if your kids are into any marine biology or sea life. I think they'll find it interesting. Excuse me, I'm looking for a tool that I misplaced. Let me grab it. Where did I put it? Um, I have these little cotton tipped makeup applicators that work great for getting into tight places. And I thought I had them in my little toolbox here, and what you know, I don't see them. But they're great for cleanup or um, getting any like smears like I just did here off of this. Let me go back to my little paper towel and see if I can clean that up while I wait for the other to dry. Oh, that works pretty good, yeah. Much easier to get it um, cleaned up while it's still wet before the chalk paste gets real hard. Going to clean things up a little bit, and then let's get moving along here. Are you a member of my VIP group? If you'd like to be privy to a special bundle pricing, some additional tips and techniques, and some more videos, and some the occasional game or two, comment VIP below, and I'll, I'll send you a link to my VIP group. Be on the lookout for Children's Chalk Time coming soon. Special presentations with pro projects tailored to the younger crowd. Complementing shared online resources for additional learning. A lot of, I realize a lot of parents have been thrust into the position of homeschooling their children and I'm sure that is a bit of an adjustment for both child and parent and if I can I'd like to offer, offer the opportunity to help or make that a little bit easier in some way. One thing that stands out in my mind from when I was a youngster was a special teacher of mine, Mrs. Mary Patterson, who in sixth grade, which I thought was odd. Um, I had her actually for fifth and sixth grade, so I was fairly familiar with her, but at the beginning of the sixth year of sixth grade, she began reading to our class, which was a little bit unusual, and all of us kids were kind of like, excuse me, you're going to read a chapter out of a book to us each day? We're too old for that. Well, we weren't. She picked the Little House books and it didn't take long for her to have all of us enthralled with the series. Every morning we would start 
sit down nice and quietly and organize and wait for her to read a chapter out of the Little House books. And it was amazing how she tamed our class. We had a couple kids in class that were a little bit of cut-ups and she changed them. It changed the whole tone of our classroom and I think it opened up the learning experience to children that maybe were a little bit uncomfortable or not used to sitting still for such a long period of time. It was really a great experience. You may want to um, pick a series of books for your kids and include them all. I'm just working my way around the wreath, chalking in the leaves and the flowers <clears throat> until I have it all finished. And I want to make sure as I do each section that I smooth it, remove any lines, and remove the excess paste. Here's the finished project. Well, maybe not quite finished just yet. I decided that some of the leaves and flowers might look a little bit better if I colored them in. So I just took a little tiny dab of chalk paste, watered it down with my distilled water a bit, and I'm using a paintbrush to basically watercolor or paint over what I've chalked. And I'm just going around, adding a little bit, adjusting, smoothing it out, adding maybe a little bit more color here and there to get the effect that I'm looking for. Watercolor is, is actually very easy. It really just is a little bit of chalk paste watered down to the consistency you like. You might need to play with it a little bit and see how it goes. Um, our chocolate chips are great for trying things out like that, but I think it gives a nice look to many of our stencil and chalk designs. Now my mom took a look at this when I was finished and said, hmm, it needs something. And she was right. I wasn't quite sure exactly what it needed, but she suggested some ribbon. So I found some ribbon in a complimentary color. It actually is more of a pink than the peaches, but I think it goes very nice with this. And I just added a line of ribbon at the top and at the bottom. And I also chalked the sentiment in the center of the heart. A li little bit more tedious, tedious of a project than I usually do, but I think all in all, it came out looking fairly well. Find your creativity, lose your inhibition. Subscribe to Club Couture today. Club Couture delivers an exclusive transfer to club members every month along with individual paste packets to complete the project. It's a little bundle of creativity landing on your doorstep for only $19.99 a month. That includes shipping. So if you want a uh, way to escape for an hour or so, Club Couture might be just the thing you're looking for. Our transfers are reusable and can be reused 8 to 12 times with the proper care. And how nice to have the packets, complimentary color packets or chalk paste packets included with the project. You supply the surface, we supply the stencil and chalk for only $19.99. Something to consider. If you'd like additional information, just comment club below and I will send you more information about Club Couture.
Okay, time to add the sentiment to the center of the wreath. I'm just going to chalk the word love. And it looks like I'm a little bit off center. I think I have an idea that'll add a little zip to it and not make it look like it's a little off kilter there. What do you think? Took a little bit longer than my mo than most projects for me, but like I said, it's a little bit more tedious, a little bit more detailed. I do think the watercoloring added just a little bit more depth to the project even though without it it's a beautiful transfer a beautiful design and I have to, it, to admit watercoloring with chalk to me is almost like coloring in a coloring book you get into that zone and everything kind of drops away and it's so relaxing almost kind of like a meditation of a sort. So I've added the ribbon and I and a few little rhinestones to give it a little bit of sparkle. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful life.